Well, I think they've taken a look at the forecast that they had in February. And at that time, you'll remember, they'd actually pushed up the growth forecast a lot. Some people thought too much, thinking that the growth this year might now be as much as 2% uh, for the UK. But they haven't decided to do much to that. They've nudged, nudged it down. But looking at the balance of evidence, you know, inflation looks like it might be a little bit lower in the short run, but longer in the long term, a bit higher growth weakening a bit. They've just decided to keep things where they are. But they have, I think, sent a little signal that if the growth really does come through, if you don't get a slowdown due to the squeeze on living standards, real wages falling and consumption falling, well, then interest rates might rise a bit faster than the market's thinking. Is the bank being a bit optimistic in assuming that this slowdown in uh, wages compared with inflation is only going to be a temporary phenomenon? Well, it's interesting because they had been on the gloomy side of that and now they're on the more optimistic side. And you get the sense that at least a, a good chunk of the Monetary Policy Committee is, is waiting to be proved wrong on that because they haven't, they're haven't. they only just sending slight signals that rates might go up faster. But you're right, I think what they're betting on, which is reasonable, is that you'll get some offset from export growth this year. You know, we tend to think that Brexit might be a problem long term for trade, but short term, while British companies still have all that access to their biggest markets, while the European economy is picking up and you have that more competitive pound, I think you could get quite a lot of growth in exports this year. But how much of a risk is the bank taking in baking into its forecasts a smooth Brexit? Well, I think they give the impression they almost have no choice, that they don't think it's practical to outline some kind of sort of doomsday scenario for a very abrupt Brexit. But I suspect that is why they're still erring on the side of caution when it comes to policy, still indicating a very loose policy, because they do think that there could be greater uncertainty down the road and they want to be able to react to that and support the economy. Was that almost a shot across Theresa May's bows from the governor today where he said, he more or less said, you know, a deal is better than no deal. Yeah, I think there was a little bit of that, but then any economist would say the same thing. And of course, you have to make a judgment about whether the prime minister is really just as a negotiating stance, uh, has to, feels that she has to be able to indicate that she will walk away from the table where anyone reasonable would say, gosh, that's not in the interest of the economy. And what's your central forecast for UK GDP growth compared with the banks right now? Well, I think I'd be among uh, those in the city who think it could be a bit lower than that, that the consumption slowdown could continue that we've seen in the first quarter. But I'd bet you would get quite a lot of offset from exports. The lesson of the last few years is that you can, if you get both the weaker currency and growth in your market, the nearest markets. We had one of those, but we didn't have both in 2008. But if the European economy is doing better, that should mean British exporters do better. Sterling took a bit of a tumble on the inflation report and on the MPC vote. A, a few people had expected Michael Saunders to join Kristen Forbes in the Hawks camp. Was that a surprise to you? Actually, it wasn't a surprise because if you looked at his speech, he was quite careful. He was saying that this could be an argument, but he wasn't necessarily changing his view. I think so many of them are still in that committee of the mind that it's better to be too loose than too, than too tight when you have this much uncertainty. You want to have all the room you can to respond. So do you think there'll be a rate rise this side of uh, 2020? I think you'd have to make the betting on some kind of rate rise unless something cataclysmic happens to the economy. But I think those who were expecting it maybe around the turn of the year, I think that is very unlikely.